called the Wichol Center, and one of their purposes was to maintain this culture. You know, with Western civilization, you know, encroaching. Look at our own native, the story of our own Native Americans. They were basically rounded up and put on reservations, and, you know, barely able to survive with their traditions. And Mexico, likewise, is a developed developing country, and, and they still have 62 different indigenous languages, but unless the, the communities themselves want to preserve it, these traditions get lost. I see on the, the board over there, you see that mask that was made by some mask makers who were here uh, in the previous year, you know, masks are used around the world. So many of these, these customs and traditions are, are very important, because if you, if you lose them, they're, they're gone forever. So the... Uh, the way with, with their parent, what his parents did is, um, by the way, he has two sisters. He's, he's the youngest. He's got two older sisters. And um, they started the center. So the center is there to help teach young children to learn the Wiratika language, to help them with um, remembering all the, the symbols and, and the culture, of the Wiratika culture. They work with learning new agricultural techniques, you know, preserving their crops and the land. And another one is they started. Uh, designing this incredible jewelry. This is uh, the traditional types of jewelry. You can see Silao even has some bracelets on his on his wrist. Those are ones that he's made. The the it's very much part of their culture to have beautiful bright colors and designs depicting these different symbols. This is a typical necklace that the type of women would wear. This is you know beautiful plastic beads about maybe a, a week's worth of work on this one. Then these over here are actually made with imported glass beads from Japan and, um, and the Czech Republic. And some of them are featured, I, I think somebody pointed out, this is Tom Brady's wife, is that correct? Is that out? She's on Vogue magazine with some of the jewelry that they make. These are all some of the magazines that their artwork has been featured in, you know, Glamour now, in Vogue in the United States and then other ones around the world. So it's with the making this, they're able to help support their, these different uh, cooperative of 50 different people who work together. One of the only other options without doing this artwork was to work in, in fields, you know, growing tobacco for crops, which is very labor intensive. And often they would be in, you know, subject to pesticides and chemicals that would be sprayed. So this unhealthy and unsafe place to work. So now, thanks to SEPTA, they're able to make a living by producing artwork. The art paintings themselves can take several weeks. That one with the sun back there is about three weeks or more of worth of work. That blue deer is one that took about three weeks worth of work. Some of these other ones are all you know, made by different artisans. Silao, so you can see this is one of his pieces, and it's quite elaborate. He really uses, you know, blending of colors. Often when he starts uh, an artwork, he does it as, a, as an offering, as, as a prayer. So he gets into a meditative state and begins just pushing the yarn into the beeswax. And the ideas come to him, the symbols come to him, and then, then he, you know, is working on one for your school. Now they also do incredible bead work. This is a, a sample of a, of a simple wooden mask. Carved out of wood, they would cover that with the beeswax and the pine resin. Then they push the beads in one at a time. It doesn't make any drawing first of all. He just, they just start. And then they work very slowly and come and develop the artwork. And of course there's symbolism there. You see the scorpion, which is a protector of the corn. It's one of its symbols. This is a small, you know, hikara. Cut it, open, and then they put beeswax on the inside and make this beautiful geometric pattern right there. This is a beautiful one. This is actually made with different... We're going to give you a chance to come up and take a closer look. You almost need to use this magnifying glass. These are miniature beads and earth drums, all pushed in to this bowl, this hikara. And again, there's symbolism in there, the herbs, there's different medicine plants. Lots of the symbolism here, you see the deer. Again, the deer is one of their most important uh, symbols as well. What they will do also, 
Salau right now has a waiting list of a year and a half for his artwork. So many people want to have it, so they just have to wait, take their, <laughs> wait their turn. Uh, so one of the things that they do when they finish their artwork, they document it, and they make a photograph of it, and then they reprint them. This is actually a reprint of a yarn painting, and they decorate it with bits of sparkles, glitter, to uh, you know, accentuate it even more. They even make jewelry. Here you see uh, bottle caps that were uh, flattened out, and then they're decorated with painted and some glitter on there as well. 